It's early 1900s. Physiologists William Baylis and Ernest Starling are in their lab performing two beautiful experiments that they will later publish in 1902. They were interested to know how does the passing food through the dog's gut trigger the pancreas to release its secretions. Was it the nervous system, a view that was suggested at the time, or was it some other signaling mechanism yet to be discovered? To answer these questions, they performed the first experiment where they blocked the nerves to the intestine and the pancreas of a lab animal, but not the blood vessels. When acidic food from the stomach entered the intestine, the pancreas still responded by releasing the secretions without any nerve input. They went further to give an intravenous injection of the extract of the glandular intestinal lining, which prompted the pancreas to secrete its juices. Their findings led them to conclude that the substance produced by the intestinal glandular lining was giving the signal to the pancreas. They named this substance secretin. Their work supported the centuries-old hypothesis that the blood carries chemical signals influencing bodily functions. And the term hormone was coined from the Greek word hormon, meaning to set in motion according to some sources, or I arouse to excitement according to others. This was the birth of the new biological science of endocrinology and the start of the discovery of many more of these chemical messengers, the hormones. In humans, as well as all animals, cells are constantly communicating through sending chemical signals back and forth in response to the surrounding environment. These signals, upon receipt, would influence the cell's metabolic activity, division, or gene expression. We can categorize these signals into short-range signals, signals that are secreted and transmitted locally in the interstitial fluid, the fluid between the cells, and gap junctions. Neurotransmitters are an example of this type of signaling. And long-range signaling, such as the hormones, which are secreted in the interstitial fluid, they reach the capillaries to enter the bloodstream and travel throughout the body until they reach their target cells. So, compared to the short-range signaling, hormones travel farther, last longer, and have an effect on far more cells. For a hormone to accomplish the intended job, it has to bind to its receptor on or inside the target cell. The binding of the hormone is a reversible process, and its effect decline over time as the body breaks them down. Hormones are made from a variety of sources. Steroid hormones, including the male hormone, the testosterone, but also the female hormones, estrogens and progesterone, as well as others such as aldosterone and cortisol, are derived from cholesterol. Amine hormones, such as the thyroid hormone, melatonin and epinephrine, are modified amino acids. Peptide hormones, such as glucagon and parathyroid hormone, among others, are short chains of amino acids. And protein hormones, such as insulin and prolactin, among others, are longer chains of amino acids. Hormones are secreted by a number of glands as well as the gonads, the ovaries and the testes. Hormones regulate a large number of functions. If you are interested to know more about them, let me know in the comments below. And of course, do not forget to like and subscribe. You've reached this far, it would be a shame not to do it.